Hey everybody, it is March 3rd, something like that. And we have had some of the strangest weather this winter. And we've been kind of on the fence about topping our trees. Do we, don't we, woo, woo looking at the weather. Um, and it's to the point now where we know we're going to be really busy in the next couple of weeks and we're not gonna have a lot of time to tap. Um, so today we are going to toss in all of our taps. It's just hovering around freezing right now, so not ideal. You like it to be, oh, that was a starling. You like it to be definitely above zero, but it is what it is. It just means that we won't kind of um, hammer in the taps really hard. Cause if you do that at this time of year, you can crack the bark, which you don't want to happen. Now this year, uh, we made a couple changes. Last year we ran lines for the first time out of a couple trees and that was really cool. We didn't have a lot, but the ones we did have were great. We still use buckets, so old fashioned, I know for many of you. Um, but uh, this year we bought different spiles. Uh, so a number of years ago when we started tapping our trees, we bought the larger spiles, but this year we got a smaller diameter spile, which requires a smaller diameter drill bit is better for the tree. So I'm just going to get uh, our stuff together. We, we got it all kind of into one area. So now I'm just going to load it in the sled and we're going to get out and do this. And we're hoping to get this done really quickly because we're basically on lunch break. So what we don't get done at lunch, we're going to have to do after work today, but that's okay. It's a, it's a great way to you kind of get out and enjoy the sunshine for lunch instead of doing what I normally do which is sit in front of my computer and keep working so here we go that's loud so normally when we tap it's a two-person operation one person will drill and clean out the hole and the other person will set the buckets so that's probably how we're gonna do it again here today, just for efficiency, because we are on a timeline here. jokes about my <laughs> all right load it up I got my expiles I got my little mallet we're ready okay so the rule of thumb is no more you want to be at least six inches away laterally from a, a previous hole and no more than a foot above or below so those are the rules you just want to be on a slightly either 90 degree or downward angle slightly just like that we bought a special bit this year for tapping and if you have to clean out the hole i just usually get a stick you should, these, these bits shouldn't have to you shouldn't have to these. <laughs> but i just usually get a stick <clears throat> and clean it out so these are our new spiles they're kind of cute i hope the plastic holds up the sap won't be running right now maybe this afternoon so just a little tap and then the buckets have a little hole on them. You want this one here? Some of the rules around tapping, general rules of thumb, are that you don't want to tap a tree that is less than 20 centimeters DBH. Um, and if it's greater than 25 centimeters DBH, then you can put two taps per tree. We tend not to follow that rule too, too much. Um, we, we try only to put maximum of two on a tree unless it's a monster. So, so yeah. And then I'll come around after Brian because I have to keep track of his taps. 
um, and put all the lids on so that you don't get a lot of debris in the buckets, uh, especially when it starts to get warmer. It's very interesting. There's a species of moth that is actually attracted to the buckets. So we try to, um, you have the, the lids so that you don't get too many moths and bark and stuff like that falling in. I actually think you should tap and put the spile in. And I'll come around and put the buckets on because I can't find the hole. And that's, that's not gonna be, it's, it takes, I can, I can be faster if I just do buckets and lids. The lids are pretty neat. They have this little sliding, my dad would call it a doohickey, this little sliding pin that just slides open like this and it sits on, it kind of threads through the spile and onto the bucket, just like that. So when you come to drain the sap, you just lift it up, unhook the pail and dump it. I didn't go for my walk this morning because I was hoping that we'd be doing this. And the dogs aren't out here today with us because Tilly has a sore paw and she goes absolutely wild. They love this. So we sadly had to keep them inside. Okay guys, one other way to know when to tap your trees. This is a little bit of phonology here, which is looking for things in nature that are a sign that something else is happening. If you see all these little black dots on the snow that look like pepper, you'll notice that they're hopping or they're moving. There, there they go. These are called springtails. They're a tiny little insect that have this little appendage on their belly or on their abdomen called a furcula. And it basically is like a little lever. That's why they're called springtails that allows them to kind of spring off the ground and jump all around. And so when you see springtails active, it is one of the ways to know when it is time to tap. Now I'm sure that's not hard science, um, but it's just an observation that I've made in the last number of years while doing maple syrup. So anyways, they're super cute. They are harbingers of spring, so it's coming. Okay, we got most of them done. We have about 20 buckets left, but we have to go back to work. So probably we're gonna be doing this by headlamp tonight. Uh, hopefully going ice fishing tomorrow, which is super exciting. Uh, but hopefully we have a good syrup season. It's gonna be interesting this year just because of the weather, but a couple of the taps started to run as we were tapping. So that's always a good sign. At least we're gonna know we're, we're gonna have some pancakes this year. So anyways, thanks for watching. Have a great day and we'll see you next time.